Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. So I'm doing one of, another one of my hate videos today. Now, I understand that these titles are a little tongue in cheek. I'm just having a lot of fun. Now, obviously, I love the NES. This video is five things I hate about the NES, the great Nintendo Entertainment System. I clearly love the NES, although I can be objective about it. And I'm gonna point out five things that I'm less than thrilled about about the NES. Now, very briefly, no hate here, please. I do love the NES. As a matter of fact, I wrote the world's first complete guide to the NES. My forthcoming book, which is available for pre-order, the NES Omnibus Volume 1, A through L, is a true labor of love. Had a great time working on this book. Check it out. It is a just filled to the brim with NES greatness. Anyway, just wanted to give you that, guys. I got my NES for Christmas in 1987. I've been playing it ever since. It's one of my five greatest, you know, five favorite game systems of all time. But in the, you know, in the spirit of pure objectivity, let's get to five things that are less than great about the NES. So number five, if you look at the NES library, there's a number of arcade classics on there, you know, ported to the NES, like Joust and Burger Time and... Bump and Jump and some others, that's awesome. There's some really good ports on there. There's Dig Dug 2. You're thinking, Dig Dug 2? Where's Dig Dug 1? That's what I'd like to know. Why is there Dig Dug 2 for the NES, but not Dig Dug? I just think that's really weird. Maybe that's not really something to hate about the system. That's just something to be confused about. Similarly, they have Millipede, the sequel to Centipede, the much more well-known game. Now, I love both. Uh, Dig Dug 2 is a good game, Dig Dug is a great game, but Millipede and Centipede are both great games. Absolutely, capital letters, great. But they came out with the Millipede for the NES, but not Centipede. Again, that's just kind of odd. I don't really get it. I'm sure, maybe, hey, leave in the comments if you know why Centipede and Dig Dug, the more popular games, the original games in those respective series, weren't ported to the NES, please let me know. I just think it's kind of strange. Number four, Donkey Kong. Why in the world is Donkey Kong missing the conveyor belt screen, similarly to the ColecoVision version? Now, when the NES come out, you're like, all right, great, a new system. This is gonna be upgrades. In a lot of way, ways, it was upgrades over previous systems. But why did Donkey Kong, which I play via my Donkey Kong Classics collection, why does Donkey Kong not have the conveyor belt screen? Obviously, the NES was perfectly powerful enough to have the conveyor belt level. Why did Nintendo get lazy and not have it? I think the ColecoVision was probably powerful enough to have the conveyor belt screen too, considering that minor 2049er had 11 screens, but I digress. It's just ridiculous to me that Donkey Kong for the NES did not have the conveyor belt screen. I wanted to upgrade, and, it's, and it has missing the same screen that uh, the ColecoVision was missing. Kind of inexcusable as far as I'm concerned. That is number four, missing the conveyor belt screen in Donkey Kong. Just kind of weird. Number three, the NES. Okay, so movie, tra let's talk about movie translations, movie adaptations. The Nintendo NES had a kind of a hit and miss track record for movie translations. Uh, a lot of times there were misses, now there were exceptions, like Batman and, a, you know, a few others. But they take a perfectly good movie like Lethal Weapon and eliminate... There's no two-player cooperative mode. What is up with that? You know, Riggs and Murtaugh, why can't you play them at the same time? Punching and kicking were more effective than shooting in this game. Not that great. Predator, uh, the level design is so broken, there's a self-destruct mechanism. <laughs> Go figure there. Rambo, sluggish controls, it's easy to get lost, and it's poor animation. Now, this is particularly relevant to me, these action movie games in particular uh, for the NES. A lot of them are confusing and convoluted, and uh, this is, pertains to me in particular because around this time when the NES was big in the late 80s, I was babysitting a couple of kids for friends of mine. And... Um, the son, the older of the two kids, he always wanted to stop at the store and rent NES games. And I have very fond memories of playing a number of great games, but he was a big action movie buff and he always wanted to rent movie-based games. And I would just have to tell him, these probably aren't gonna be good, but we, you know, 
Who am I to tell him no? So he, using his mom's money, he would rent these games. We would try them out, and the poor kid, he would play them. Uh, and hey, Zeb, how you doing? <laughs> he would play them and just not get very far or be frustrated or confused, but he played them anyway because he just loved the franchises. And anyway, number three is just sort of confusing, bad, or just otherwise kind of broken movie-based games. Games like Cool World, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, just not the greatest. All right, that is number three. Just a licensed game for the NES when it came to movies. Just definitely not the best uh, for a lot of those games. All right, number two. The NES started a sort of a trend of consoles not having trackballs. The NES, like the Atari 5200 and the ColecoVision both had excellent tra trackballs. The ColecoVision one was called the Roller Controller. And I know what you're saying, or maybe you're saying this, I don't know. The Sega Master System did have the Sega Sports Pad trackball, but it was barely supported. Kind of a non-starter. I don't really count it. And a third party company made a trackball for the PlayStation. I covered this in a previous video. It only works good for one game that was Crystal Castles. It's pretty worthless for Centipede and Millipede and a bunch of Missile Command and some other trackball based uh, games for the PlayStation. But the NES, it more or less started the trend of home consoles not having a trackball after the ColecoVision and Atari 5200, you think, okay, well you're thinking the 7800 didn't have a trackball either. Whatever, the NES was the big popular system, picking up where the, you know, in the, after the great video game crash and the 5200 and the ColecoVision went away and then the NES becomes the dominant system. No trackball, so that is number two. That's unfortunate of things I hate about the NES. I love the NES, but there are some things I don't, I'm not crazy about. Number one, loose connectors with the toaster, the original edition of the NES. You plug your game in, put it down, and a lot of times you turn it on and it just gets blinking because over time, the connectors get loose and this can be very frustrating. And you know, this is where, and so with the NES, it's funny. Some negative things about the NES, like the ineptness of the, the, ineptness of the power glove as a controller, and like Rob the Robot not being a very good, you know, gameplay uh, implement. Um, you know, cool looking and all that, iconic. These things that aren't great about the NES become iconic. As a matter of fact, just a side note, I didn't include Rob or the Power Glove in this video because those have been talked about to death. But um, loose connectors have been talked about too, but this is such an overriding thing that I wanted to talk about it. And do not blow in your NES system to get games to work. Number one, it can be ineffective and, and it can corrupt, rust or whatever. The innards are your NES. So years ago, at uh, GameStop or Funcolan, I think it was still Funcolan at this point, an employee showed me a better way to get your NES game to work. Of course, you clean it and had cleaning supplies and all that and still do, but take your Dragon's Lair cartridge if you ever wanna play that game. You plug it into your NES and your toaster, you press it down, and if you get just wide or blinking or whatever, instead of blowing in it or whatever or hitting yourself in the head with a hammer, you push it down and you slide that back and forth like that. Well, that pops up, but anyway, you push it down and you hold it like that. And it stays down like that. And when you're holding it down and you rub it back and forth, that makes those connectors uh, connect like they're supposed to. And that works a lot of the time. So just a tip for you NES fans. Now Nintendo did correct their problem with the vaunted NES top loader, but this is a harder console to find and is worth quite a bit in the collector's market. I haven't tracked the price lately, but I think it's maybe $150, $200, maybe more. I don't know what the way retro game prices are going. I actually got this one with the hookups and the wishbone or dog bone controllers for, wishbone? Dog bone controllers for four bucks at a garage sale years ago, sometime in the 90s. Anyway, that's how I got my top loader. Anyway, guys, just having fun here. I truly don't hate the NES, but I like to be objective, and there are five things that kind of make me a little crazy about the NES, or they're at least puzzling, or at least I don't like about it. But I do love me some NES, and if you love the NES too, uh, in the description of this video, I do have my NES Omnibus available 
for uh, pre-order. And if you want something, someone who's objective about the NES writing about it, maybe give it, uh, you know, click on that link, check it out. And uh, like this video, I really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments, what do you hate or at least dislike about the NES, which is obviously one of the most iconic, and one of the greatest consoles of all time. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Channel's growing fast, and I owe that all to you guys. We will talk to you later.